welcome to today's topic today's topic is fraunhofer diffraction act circular aperture in the previous classes we have discussed that fraunhofer diffraction at single slit and double slit also the slits are in a rectangular shape we have taken previously but here the obstacle uh, is a circular aperture so why we have to be discuss this one why because so generally to observe the very distant objects we are using the telescopes the lens of the telescope is in a circular shape is it or not yes so same like that if we take if you want to study the very small particles okay if you want to study the very small particle we are using some optical instrument the optical instrument is microscope for the microscope is also the lens is in a circular position only circular shape only so their resolution is depends upon the uh, this the resolution is depends upon the uh, wavelength and also the diameter of the diameter of the lens okay to know that one to understand this concept initially we have to be know about the fraunhofer diffraction at circular aperture to understand that one we have to take a circular aperture this is the circular aperture whose diameter is whose diameter is d whose diameter is d okay we have to take a wave front so this is a wave front coming like this these are the rays this is i am saying here a and this is i am saying here b so whenever the rays are coming and reaches the aperture automatically the secondary wave is produced these secondary wave rays traveling like this and you want to focus them on our screen so m n is the screen so on the screen you want to focus them at the position p not that's why we have to be use lens that is convex lens whenever you are using the convex lens it has to be placed within the length of focal length within the length of focal length okay automatically the secondary rays reaches our screen at the position p not at the p not we can get the maximum intensity okay that's where that is also called as central maxima or principal maxima now due to the circular aperture due to the circular aperture at the edges the rays are diffracted the diffracted rays travel like this and reaches our screen at the position p1 at the position p1 p1 okay these are making angle with initial rays that is theta that is also called as angle of diffraction previously ap not and bp not are same there is no path reference but when you come here so there is a path difference between the ap1 and also the bp1 we need to calculate the path difference why we need to calculate the path difference why because whether the p1 is maximum intensity or minimum intensity the maximum intensity or minimum intensity depends upon the path difference that's way we have to calculate the path reference previous classes also we have calculated to calculate the path reference between the ap1 and also the bp1 we have to draw a normal this is the normal this is the normal ac is the normal that means from the ac they travel equal distance there is no path reference but this is a additional distance traveled by the ray bp1 that is bc this is also angle of diffraction theta that is also equals to the theta this is the hypotenuse now we have to calculate the path difference so path difference path difference what is the path difference here bc bc is the 
path reference bc is the path reference bc is this opposite or not yes is this hypotenuse or not yes so we want the value of opposite we have the hypotenuse that's why we have to take sin theta we have to take sin theta sin theta equals to opposite that means bc by hypotenuse hypotenuse that is ab that is equals to the diameter of the diameter of the circular aperture diameter of the circular aperture that implies bc equals to d sin theta bc equals to d sin theta which is equals to the path difference which is equals to the path difference as we know that at the p naught maximum intensity okay now is the whether the p1 is maximum intensity or minimum intensity okay we have the general conditions that is in the diffraction if this path difference is equals to the integral multiple of wavelength we can get the minimum intensity there if the path difference is equals to the odd multiples of wavelength then we can get the brightness okay so suppose if you see here the distance between these two that means central maxima to this particular point i am saying here x what i am saying is that x okay whether the x is maximum intensity or minimum intensity we have to equate this path difference to our general conditions so according to our general condition according to our general condition that is path reference uh, for the minima for minima for minima the path reference equals to integral multiple of wavelength n lambda for minima uh, where n equals to where n equals to 0 1 2 3 so on okay for maxima intensity for maxima intensity for maxima intensity the path reference must be equals to the 2n plus 1 into lambda by 2 where n equals to n equals to 0 1 2 3 so on n so on n we have to equate this one with the minimum intensity so if we equate that one with that then the path reference path reference uh, what we got here d sin theta that means d sin theta equals to d sin theta equals to n lambda this is the condition for minimum for the minimum which type of uh, intensity we can observe darkness so whenever here it is a darkness it is a, it is a one dimensional that means here i am showing like a dot but it is a circular aperture from the x from the x uh, from the center to the x distance if it is a if it is a dark spot automatically surrounding with the same x distance we can observe the darkness only so that means all the dark spots can forms like a ring all the dark spots forms like a ring at the center we are observing the maximum intensity that means center we can observe the bright spot like this this is also called as Airy's disc. It was explained by Airy. That's why that is called as Airy's disc. After that, we can observe the dark ring, and also like that, we can observe a alternate dark and bright rings. Okay. Now our concept: we have to be equal this path reference uh, to the integral multiple of wavelength. Then. For example, theta is maximum means theta equals to 90 degrees. If theta equals to 90 degrees, we can get the d equals to d uh, sin 90 equals to 1. Sin 90 equals to sin 90 degrees equals to 1. Therefore, d equals to d equals to d equals to n lambda. That implies uh, if n equals to 
sorry uh, sin 90 degrees equals to 1 it is the maximum okay for small values of theta for small values of theta how we can write it sin theta is which is equals to the theta sin theta which is equals to the theta that implies that implies how we can write this equation is d into theta equals to uh, sin 90 degrees equals to 1 means n equals to 1 so n equals to 1 that's way d into theta equals to lambda that implies theta equals to d by uh, lambda by lambda by d this is so called equation number 1 this is called equation number 1 our aim is how the how the radius of the rings depends upon the diameter of the circular aperture regarding that here we have placed this one in the distance of focal length this is the focal length distance that means from here to here this is the focal length we have to be extend this one so this is the theta this is theta okay from this triangle from this triangle suppose we may say this one a the a from this triangle e p uh, uh, p naught e p one we can write tan theta equals to tan theta equals to opposite tan theta equals to opposite that means p naught p one by p naught p one by e p one by e p one that implies tan theta equals to tan theta equals to p naught p one which is equals to the focal length sorry p naught p one which is equals to the x and e p one here these two that means this lens is nearby the circular aperture due to that one the e p naught which is always equals to the almost equals to the e p one that's way was one 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 thing you should be remember these two are almost equal why because for small value of theta here we are taking that theta is very small for, for small values of theta here also we have written like that for small values of theta that's way tan theta equals to x by f this is very important point you have to be remember why here we are taking e p 1 is also equals to f is for small values of theta these two are equal these two are equal so for example uh, already i told you small value of theta that means tan theta which is equals to sin theta uh, for example tan 0 0 10 1 degree 0 0.00 something so the for that reason we have to write like that so theta equals to x by f theta equals to x by f this is called as equation number 2 from equation 1 and 2 from equation 1 and 2 what we can write is from equations 1 and 2 theta means x by f that equals to lambda by d that equals that implies x equals to f lambda by d x equals to f lambda by d here f is the focal length lambda is the wavelength d is the diameter of the diameter of the circular aperture from this what we can say is if if diameter of the circular aperture is increases the radius of the iris disc is decreases okay and also we have to be uh, write one more thing that is theta equals to lambda by t lambda by d and theta equals to x by f by using this one we can write one more equation okay uh, from this equation actually it is the equation theta equals to lambda by d we got okay that means theta is inversely proportional to the diameter of the diameter of the circular aperture it is has given a proportionality constant to satisfy that equation to satisfy that equation that is 
that is 1.22 1.22 therefore theta equals to 1.22 lambda by 1.22 lambda by d this is the equation for theta okay so this is the concept of Fraunhofer diffraction at circular operation this is also very important this is also very important okay so if you want the, the total fringe uh, diameter of the diameter of the iris disc we have to be double this value okay thank you